All right, so about eight or nine months ago, I did a back purging video, and uh, it, it covered all of the things that you want to, you know, maybe basically learn about, you know, how to do it, why to do it, you know, how it's set up, what it looks like, uh, you know, with and without, all the rest of that good stuff. I really love shooting that video, and a lot of people told me that uh, it really helped them step up their back purging game. So, you know, awesome. Glad I could do it. Uh, but recently, I, back purging has come up again, and I've been taking a lot of questions and answering them as best as I can in reference to the video that Jody made. Uh, now, if you haven't seen Jody's video, or, you know, I mean, I would like to say that everybody who knows welding knows who Jody is. Uh, he did a fantastic video uh, recently on back purging. Uh, threw in some information there. I think I might have left out of mine. And he offered up a really good visual representation of what the argon gas uh, goes through and how it looks and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's worth checking out. You know, it offers additional opinion here. So, uh, they followed up recently on the podcast with uh, Jody, Jonathan, and Roy. Uh, they all followed up on their uh, views, opinions, interpretations, all the rest of that stuff on purging. Uh, but they did talk a little bit about the automotive performance fab world, which is my industry. That's where I've been for the past, I don't know, 17 years now? Something like that? So I've got something I can kind of throw in here, and it just so happens today I'm right in the middle of a build. So that's why we don't have the fancy camera set up and, you know, typical production value going on right now. Uh, but this piece that I got, it's a wastegate dump tube. And as I pulled it off the car today, I have to rebuild it. Um, it's, uh, we found a problem with it. Now, we'll just kind of examine it, you know, relatively here. Uh, we, got, we got welds on it. You know, there's filler on it, mostly. Uh, there are some spots in here it looks like it was done autogenously, uh, basically pedal pulse, no filler. Uh, but that's, you know, that's not really the problem. We're not beating anybody up over this. I mean, it's, it's, it's good quality stainless. It's got a nice ring to it. It's not the cheap stuff you buy. It's not mystery metal. You know, it's not any of that stuff. It's, it's straight up legit stainless. I mean, the weld goes all the way around. Not, not a decoration piece. Not, you know, again, we're not beating anybody up. But let's see if I can actually, uh, maybe I can get in the light just right here. Uh, you can kind of see it there. We get a crack. Now the crack starts from about right here and it ends about right there. So more than 180 degrees of this weld is cracked. And it's not because there's not enough metal or anything on there. I mean, the weld is, it's pretty solid. I mean, it's a big thick weld. I mean, there's, there's enough holding this together. So the problem actually lies on the inside. He got full penetration. Whoever built this piece got full penetration on the way, all the way through it. But the biggest problem that we have here, we'll try to get this in the light again. Look on the inside edge there. There was no penetrate, or there was no purge on it. We got full penetration, but no purge. So all of what's in the inside of here is what we usually call sugaring. Now stainless steels, like 304 series or 3 series stainless, just about every stainless steel reacts with the atmosphere at a certain temperature. Meaning when it gets hot, instead of the weld solidifying correctly or solidifying like the outside does when it's covered under argon, the inside, when exposed to the atmospheric elements like the air we breathe, reacts with the atmosphere at a certain temperature. That means that it starts sugaring up or it turns into this nasty granular crap, which a lot of people usually would recognize as carbide precipitation. So um, it, it's basically the equivalent of a metallic sponge. It's filled with holes. It's very brittle metal. It's, there's not a lot holding it together. And however far, the atmosphere reacted uh, into the, the actual weld itself. However far it reacted is how much it's actually filled with those holes and that nastiness and that brittle, weak material that's, that's pretty much holding all of that together. Uh, when it's solidified, it's not strong. It's very, very weak and it contaminates your weld. So if you want to put this into like layman's terms, if you will, the outside of the weld looks great. The inside of the weld looks terrible because it's got all those little sponges and holes in it. So that's literally about half of the weld holding this piece together. Now in automotive performance fabrication, we know that this piece, a wastegate dump tube in this case, is subject to a lot of heat cycling and a ton of vibration. Every single time you start up that engine, it gets hot. You know, every time you make a pull, uh, you know, you step on the gas, it gets hotter. Uh, every single time you, you know, accelerate, decelerate, take a turn, shift, bang the gears, whatever, it's subject to vibrations, it's subject to shock loads, it's, you know, the heat cycling up and down several hundred degrees. You know, during a strong pull, you're somewhere, you know, around 1,500, 1,800 degrees that this is sitting at, but when you're sitting there at idle, it's probably about roughly seven to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I mean, it, it cycles a lot. It goes up and down all the time, goes through a ton of vibrations, so you ideally want the strongest weld possible to hold this together, and that's achieved by getting full penetration all the way through and with purge on the inside because when you see like in my back purging video for example you see the uh, the inside of the weld and the outside of the weld and with a properly purged piece it looks like there's a weld on the inside as well as on the outside that means you have basically a sandwiched 
uh, your pieces, your joint, uh, where the two pieces are welded together at the joint, are basically sandwiched between weld, strong weld. And that's basically the purpose of doing it. Now, I'm not saying don't penetrate all the way through and take your chances, because that's also like having half of a weld. So make sure that when you actually do weld pieces, make sure you get full penetration on it, and make sure that you purge, especially if you're working with a reactive metal like stainless steel, titanium, any one of those things. I mean, mild steel, it's not gonna hurt to do it. You can do it all you want, but it's not really mandatory because mild steel will actually solidify correctly on the inside, it doesn't react. But you know, if you're gonna do it, make sure you do it with full pen and purge, uh, you know, and, and, and don't invite a disaster like that, you know? Again, this piece, it wasn't really because it was, you know, welded like, you know, not looking pretty. It was because it was welded together without any type of uh, actual uh, uh, purge on the back side. So that sugaring and all the rest of the stuff is pretty much what destroyed this piece. So hopefully that helps, uh, you know, explain some of this stuff just a little bit better. Maybe I can offer my insights on it. That's really the ultimate goal here. I do have to get back to work. This build has a seriously tight deadline. Thank you again to, uh, you know, Jody, Jonathan, Roy, all of you guys uh, that do all of this and put your, your you know, your uh, pieces and episodes and everything like that together. Uh, you know, we're all here to help everybody out, so it's it's really cool sometimes when you can see a, something like that that you can you can kind of help and reiterate on. So anyway, I gotta get back to work. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode.